President of IDS Research and Development Incorporated. This video is copyrighted. This is the Honeywell Vista 128 FBP control unit. This is a system sensor PC2W. This is the ECP isolator. This is the 5881EN dual diversity radio receiving unit. Both of these keypads are model number 6160 CR-2. One is dedicated to ECP port 2 on the circuit board. This keypad cannot be remoted more than 20 feet from the control unit. For supplementary keypads, we need to install the same model number on ECP-1. The wiring between the control unit and this keypad can go up to approximately 1,700 feet from the control unit depending on the gauge of the wire. This is a wireless radio alarm transmitter that connects directly to the ECP-1 bus. This is a 4204CF NAC module that also connects to ECP-1 bus. This is a 4297VPLEX module which connects to both the bus for positive and negative and the polling loop. This is a 4209U VPLEX module which also connects to positive and negative of the data bus and the polling loop. This is a two-wire smoke detector, a 2WB, that connects to the 4209U module. This is a two-wire VPLEX, model number 5193SD, which connects to the 4297 module. Four-wire smoke detectors, such as this system sensor 4WB, connect directly to the control unit. Positive and negative power for this smoke detector and all smoke detectors on this four-wire loop connect directly to the bus. So we have the receiver in parallel with the ECP-1 bus. Same holds true with the wireless radio alarm transmitter. The keypad on ECP-1, again, all in parallel, all connected together. All of these, module, all, all of these modules also connect in parallel, in some form, to the bus, primarily power. In addition to that, we have the burglary keypad, which also is on the protected side of the ECP isolator. I'm now going to activate the four-wire smoke detector. As you can see, the alarm is activated. Both keypads on ECP-1 and ECP-2 have gone into alarm condition. The four-wire system sensor 4WB has been reset. This four-wire smoke detector connects directly on the positive and negative side to the data bus. As you can see, the burglary keypad, the ECP-2 keypad, and the ECP-1 keypad, both of these keypads are normal. The wireless radio alarm transmitter is functional. The 5881EN wireless receiver is functional. Now I'm going to short the positive and negative that feeds all of the smoke detectors that connect directly to the data bus. At this point there is a short. The wireless radio alarm transmitter is non-functional. All of these modules are non-functional. The ECP-1 keypad is non-functional, and while the ECP-2 keypad is now showing trouble, this keypad, if installed, can only be mounted within 20 feet of the control unit. It's not in a location which is likely to be heard. The wireless receiver is down, the wireless transmitter is down, the ECP isolator does nothing to protect against this foreseeable attack and the system is rendered catastrophically non-functional. This is the two-wire VPLEX model number 5193 smoke detector. 
This connects to the 4297 module. Power to the module connects directly to the data bus. When I short the power to the module, it shuts down the wireless radio alarm transmitter. It shuts down the ECP1 remote keypad station. It shuts down the 5881 wireless receiver. The ECP isolator is of no consequence and the system catastrophically fails. This is a system sensor 2 wire 2WB which connects to the 4209U module. Power to the module comes directly from the ECP1 bus. I'm now going to activate this smoke detector. While this keypad can activate audibly for alarm and trouble, it cannot be installed farther than 20 feet from the control unit. Therefore, it's most likely in a location that will not be heard. The ECP-1 keypad will usually be by the main entrance into the premises. As you can see, ECP-1 and ECP-2 have restored. Now I'm going to throw a short across the positive and negative which directly connect to the ECP bus on the control panel set. As you can see the wireless radio alarm transmitter is non-functional. All of the modules are non-functional. The wireless receiver is non-functional and so is the keypad on the ECP1 bus. Again, this keypad on the ECP2 bus cannot be installed farther than 20 feet away from the control unit in an area that is not likely to be heard. The ECP isolator, again, is of no consequence to this foreseeable event during a fire. This is the isolation of fire and burglary devices on the ECP bus of the Honeywell Vista 128 FBP and the Honeywell Vista 250 FBP. As you can see, burglary keypad and other modules are on the protected side of the ECP isolator. On the unprotected side of the isolator we have wireless radio alarm transmitter, wireless receiver, and the 4204 CF. In order to install supplementary keypads and the 4204CF module, the 4297 VPlex module, and the 4209U VPlex module, you must connect everything in parallel on the unprotected side of this bus. Therefore, since everything is connected in parallel on the single ECP1 bus, the control unit is non-conforming since a short across this bus will instantly render the control unit non-functional. The ECP-1 keypad is remoted anywhere from the control unit up to approximately 1700 feet from the control unit depending on the gauge wire utilized. Therefore any wiring from this keypad back to the control unit that is attacked by fire will instantly render the control unit non-functional. Same thing with these modules. Any short on these modules or on the wiring from the positive and negative of the ECP1 bus shorts, it will instantly render the control unit non-functional which is consistent with the fact that the control unit is non-conforming to both UL and NFPA 72 standards. On the 4204 CF module, which is for NAC devices such as audible and visual notification appliances, once the data bus is shorted between the control unit and this module, none of the audible and visual notification appliances on the system will function. Therefore, 
The remote station is not notified. The local keypad cannot provide enunciation. And there's no audible and notification appliances that are sounding within the protected premises during a fire emergency.